little bit new. Um, the microphone is placed under the too high. Yeah. Um, and thank you for accommodating my schedule. As uh, everybody knows, uh, we have we wear multiple hats. And my daughter, she's a lawyer. She works in the Middle East. And uh, two weeks ago, or maybe ten days ago, she told me uh, they scheduled her a flight today. And um, so uh, I'm sorry for changing the procedure of your meetings. But I appreciated you accommodated my situation. So uh, I want to begin my talk with a few minutes touching base on what happened that put many of the gender equality advocates in the United States and globally in shock. The 11-9 shock was no less than 9-11 shock. Voters, um, voters made history November 8th. Can you hear me okay? Because I think, okay. Uh, Voter made history November 8th by electing political outsider Donald Trump to the White House. AAUW has announced that the organization, AAUW National, which I'm in contact with them, has announced that the organization intend to approach its work with both the new administration and Congress with AAUW mission in mind. After this hyper-partisan election year, AAUW nonpartisan leadership and research-based advocacy is needed now more than ever. It's now after an election that the real work begins. Women want progress on issues that affect them, and AAUW intend to be a value allied and fierce critic depending on what is warranted. Most frequently, women organizations are obligated to speak truth to power more than ever. Um, Election 2016 touched on many issues that affected women and families at every level, local, state, and federal. We still face congressional gridlock over the Paycheck Fairness Act, resulting in more states taking matters in their own hands to work toward equal pay. Students, which I work on with California State University, for 29 years, both at Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Fullerton now. When I started work, um, the tuition for resident students was $339 for a semester. And now it's been three, 10 times more uh, for resident students. Students are still waiting for real action on college affordability and high student debt, and they expect a continued commitment to combating uh, campus sexual assaults. Uh, we are doing very good at, uh, in California. I'm Title IX coordinator for uh, Cal State Fullerton, along with other positions that I have, but uh, we train all the uh, all students, incoming students to our campus, whether international students or resident. A better transfer from community, they all have to go through sexual assault training or Title IX training on campus. And uh, this is to assure safety for all students. Working families are still looking for good jobs with paid family and medical leave and other workplace equality policy. And Americans still don't have the basic necessity of a full Supreme Court because there is one vacant position. The good news is that in 2017, there will be 21 women serving in U.S. Senate, that highest number in history. So that's the good news that came out of this election. The chamber will also feature a record number of women of color. Senator-elect Tammy 
Doug Ward from Illinois, Catherine Cortez Masto and Kamala Harris in California made history by becoming the first biracial woman respectfully to serve in U.S. Senate. So I, st I thought I'd start um, kind of recapping what happened in the election, which uh, as someone who works on college campuses, I see lots of, um, lots of conversation, lots of debate, lots of concern, even some of the counseling centers on campuses, they extended their hours because the student need that support venting out. Um, and so collectively we are going through a healing process and recapturing, reflecting where we are and what we need to do. As I was preparing myself for this talk this morning, um, uh, which I'm gonna go over a United Nations report that was published almost a year ago. It was really interesting to see where we were a year ago from the perspective of UN expert and now what are the what are the items that we need to put our agenda as women advocate, as gender equality advocate in the new phase, in the new next four years in United States. It was almost a year ago on December 15, 2015, at the end of a 10-day mission to United States in which the UN expert groups delegation held meetings in Washington, D.C. and visited the states of Alabama, Oregon, and Texas. Francis Reddy, one of the experts, delivered the following statement. We want to express our sincere appreciation to the government of the United States for having invited us to conduct this country visit. We are grateful to all the officials at federal and state levels and members of civil society, including women organization that met with them. Practitioners, individual women who shared their experiences with us. The report of the expert group appreciated the United States opened the door to a frank inner interchange regarding both good practices and gaps in United in United States women's enjoyment of international human rights. They acknowledged the United States commitment to liberty so well represented by the Statue of Liberty, which symbolize both womanhood and freedom. Nevertheless, the global context, US in the global context, the US women do not take their rightful place as citizen of the world's leading economy, which has one of the highest rates of per capita income. In the United States, women fall behind international standards as regard their public and political representation, their economic and social rights, and their health and safety protection. Uh, I've been working um, with United Nations Commission on the Status of Women since 1985. Every year, uh, but you know, I registered to go to the third international conference on women organized by United Nations in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, I had, my son wasn't feeling good, so I, I dropped it at the last minute because, you know, family, as women, you know, family comes first. But then uh, 10 years later, I attended um, Beijing conference, which brought 32,000 people the biggest gathering of women ever in the world. 32,000 women from all over the world came. Much, uh, from United States, 5,000 women participated in this conference, and 1,200 men overall were attending also the conference, which I had a talk on women's human rights and Islam, and in what ways they, they can go along, and in what ways we have some, um, some gaps between these two standards. Um, so I've been attending every year UN Commission on the Status of Women in New York and the global conferences. So this is one of the areas that I feel very strongly to talk about from global context where women in United States, where we are standing based on globe, in the global context. 
So U.S. women do not take their rightful place as citizen of the world-leading economy, as I mentioned. Um, so in 2010 and 2015, in the framework of the U.S. Universal Periodic Review, U.S. Uh, every United Nation has Universal Periodic Review. Every country go through this periodic review to ensure that they are meeting, or to what level they are meeting um, human rights standard globally. So the U.S. government committed to ratify the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, which is called CEDA. Uh, uh, but this commitment has not yet been implemented. This is this was in 19 uh, last year that every year U.S. commit make commitment to sign CEDA and ratify, and we signed it, but we haven't ratified it, but that hasn't happened. Resistance to ratification of CEDA reflects the opposition of a powerful sector of society to the Convention's formulation of women's international human rights to equality. This political resistance has also consistently blocked efforts to pass an equal right amendment which would entrench women's right to equality in the U.S. Constitution. The report of the experts strongly urged ratification of CEDA and adoption of the Constitution of Women's Right to Equality and Non-Discrimination as defined in the Convention. The U.S. Uh, last year, the U.S. was only one in seven countries in the world that has not ratified CEDA. As I'm speaking, U.S. is one of the four countries that has not ratified CEDA. And along with U.S. is only Islamic Republic of Iran, which I was born and raised there, and, um, and two small, uh, recently, uh, um, small islands in Pacific that recently got independence. So the two major countries that have not signed, ratified CEDA is the uh, United States and Iran. Even in the absence of ratification of CEDA, many of its standards are entrenched in the Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, and in customary international law, and are hence binding on the U.S. Nevertheless, we are the unreserved, uh, the, the expert ex expressed that we are on the unreserved opinion, opinion that ratification of CEDA is critical on both domestic and global level. In order to confirm the U.S. commitment to substantive equality for women in all spheres of life. So um, I want to add something. They appreciated a campaign that has been going on in U.S. and I think uh, Dr. Neda invited me when previously I was talking to all the branches in LA about cities for CEDA. This is a campaign because U.S. has not ratified CEDA. So four years ago at United Nations, many of us got together and we said, well, this doesn't make sense. We need to do something about it. So we started, we thought maybe we start in collaboration with U.S. and the network that I'm chair of their Global Circle, Women's Intercultural Network, we thought we start ready approving CEDA at the local level, you know, local uh, in cities. And so at the mayor's conference, US mayor's conference a few years ago, uh, we presented that and many mayors, they said, oh, we're open to considering that and passing it at our level, at the city level. So the Cities for CEDA, actually there's a website for Cities for CEDA, that's happening. And um, we, we passed the resolution in the city that I'm resident of at Long Beach. Uh, Los Angeles is now, City of Los Angeles is one of the leaders nationally in passing CEDA ordinance. So basically you pass a resolution and then yeah, you pass an ordinance and allocate a budget and implement CEDA which is the Bill of Rights for Women globally at the local level. So I don't know if anybody working in the city of LA, 
Many, I, I'm hearing from many women in that work actually as engineer, as a, a